What's going on guys? This is Junior Tour One here. Um uh, gonna make a little minor high voltage update here. Well, what do we got behind me here? Well that is ironically the Labby homemade Labby 445 nanometer blue laser that I just recently made a video of. I figured I might as well put it to some use and run it for multiple hours upon the day. So with that being said, um what are we doing today? Well, I have conveniently started a wattage sheet here, you know, watts, which is actually the answer of the equation, but volts and amps, and then the watts. With that being said, we're going to go over that later on a new blank sheet that we're going to start today. So, moving along from that, what does it consist of? It consists of my ZVS driver. Well, as of yesterday, I blew my second largest flyback. Straight from the TV anyways. So we I found this other decent one and threw it under some oil. It's good to go. But uh that oil is definitely not enough. You'll get to see that a little bit later in the video. This is actually a fairly standard ZVS driver. I know it's a mess and everything else. But um there are a few things changed. Uh technically the Z the Zener dives can be omitted in this situation because I'm running external power supply. But I keep them here handy if I ever want to run it as is. The external power supply goes in here, which actually feeds in 30 volts because I have not changed the 470 ohm resistor setup. Now, I could run it at about 15 volts if I were to drop those down to half. Now, the gates are getting roughly 20 volts. The uh, maximum for these transistors is 25 versus the standard IRFP250, blah, blah, blah. So, now, I understand they can run at a lot lower gate voltage, as is. The only reason I'm running them at such a high gate voltage is because the higher gate voltage ensures that they switch all the way. These are my main bank capacitors. I know it is quite overkill, but it comes out to 1.37 microfarads at essentially unlimited watts, unlimited amps in this situation. Now, the big change is my isolation transformer. Now this here is actually two flyback transformer cores glued together and then windings made on it. I want to upgrade this to three because it still gets warm. It saturates too easy. So I'm going to add a third core on here and see where that brings me. Now with that being said, I learned something with the isolation transformer and that is you can isolate it, you know, standard 5 plus 5 turns. This is actually 7 plus 7, so it steps up the voltage a little bit. But aside from that, you can do 5 plus 5 and 5 plus 5. Well, your arc from your flyback is going to be a lot smaller, a lot more low power, than if you do the driver direct to it. Why is that? Well, there's losses. You have to match the capacitance on the output of the transformer to the input. 1.37 microfarads, 1.38. Close enough. And feed that into your transformer your X will be exactly the same. If not, better in essence, because if your flyback fails, you're not going to lose a transistor. Let's look at an example. I am running G60 N100s. 1000 volts, 60 amps. Another thing I did change, it's a minor change. Instead of running one core for my inductor, I wanted to prevent saturation, so I glued two together, just like the flyback core isolation transformer. We have our handy dandy amp meter, current meter. This measures the current going into the driver on the load side and it's basically 0 to 20 amps DC. So we're also going to be measuring our voltage here off this voltmeter which goes straight into the cap bank even though it doesn't look like it. Here's the output of the positive leg and straight from a rectifier because it's not convenient to stick it in there. So anyways right now, well not right now, as of now we're running 50 volts input. Twenty amps, twenty amps over twenty. Not good. Not good. Can't see it. Yeah, unfortunately, I figured the backlight would help the video, but it has not. So, anyways, we saw forty on average, forty-five, forty. 
let's use the lowest possible voltage being 40 40 volts at 20 amps as the calculator states and is 800 watts so here's the chart we have so far you already see it I've already done the work let's move on to the maximum wattage we can take something I'd like to point out is this uh, driver will take much more wattage I'm getting very tempted to do a wall socket test but uh, unfortunately I know the flyback won't live that so let's watch the handy dandy amp meter So we see it does hit on 20 on the biggest arc breakout. What's our voltage? On average, I'd say our worst voltage is about 70. Just for video purposes, 70 and 20, which was a pegged out 20, so we don't really know what exactly. And that brings us 1400 watts. So anyways, we don't need to do the math. I already done it. Okay, now sorry after all the rambling and let's see some arcs, fam. Fourteen hundred to sixteen hundred watts at the tip of your fingertips. Who wants to touch it? I'll let you guys go first. Okay, now let's do something special. Let's wait for the fucking camera to focus. Okay. Back to reality. Yeah, that's how bad it is. Holy crap, burnt through my picture. Um, Houston, that's a problem. We got a bad connection going on here. Not good. Not good at all. Okay, back to work. I noticed for a split second you guys could see some of that corona just going wild here. Like, this is literally over an 80,000 volt output. Holy shit, my picture caught on fire. <laughs> 